Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineeringtrainingexam.com and in this tutorial we're going to discuss partial fractions. When we are asked to integrate a rational expression we typically look for the numerator to be a derivative of the denominator so we can simply substitute and solve. However, when this is not possible we need to move to the process of partial fraction decomposition where we decompose the rational expression into simpler rational expressions that we can then add or subtract. So let's do a quick review of partial fractions. We'll start with the rational expression in the form fx is equal to px over qx where both px and qx are polynomials and the degree of px is smaller than the degree of qx. Now recall that the degree of a polynomial is the largest exponent in the polynomial. Partial fractions can only be done if the degree of the numerator is strictly less than the degree in the denominator. Now this is important to remember. And and that is the first step in determining whether or not we can use partial fractions to integrate a rational expression. So once we've determined that partial fractions can be done, we factor the denominator as much as possible. Then for each factor in the denominator, we can use the following expressions to determine the terms we pick in the partial fraction decomposition. So when we go and um, factor the denominator, if our factor is ax plus b, and I'll put this in a table format for you. So this is the factor in the denominator. And this is going to be our term in partial fraction decomposition. So this, this will be in, in return be our term. So if we have a factor of ax plus b, then the term in our par partial fraction decomposition is going to be a over ax plus b. If our factor is ax plus b raised to the k, then our term is going to be a1 ax plus b plus a2 divided by ax plus b squared all the way up to ak divided by ax plus b to the k. So if our factor is ax squared plus bx plus c, then our term is going to be ax plus b divided by ax squared plus bx plus c. And finally, if our term is ax squared plus bx plus c raised to the k, then it's a1xb1 plus b1 divided by ax squared plus bx plus c plus a2x plus b2 divided by ax squared plus bx plus c squared and all the way up to a k x plus b k divided by ax squared plus bx plus c raised to the k. So when we're factoring the denominator once we're doing partial fraction decomposition, if that factor is ax plus b, then our partial fraction decomposition term is a divided by ax plus b, and so on. So just remember these terms. Actually, um, we'll go through a couple examples of how to use these terms um, in doing partial fraction decomposition. So this table is important. Recall this. So let's look at an example here. Let's say that we're asked to integrate the integral 3x plus 11 
divided by x squared minus x minus 6 dx. Now the first step is to factor, or first of all we need to realize that the denominator has a greater polynomial than the numerator, so partial fraction decomposition is good to go, we can do it. So the first step is to factor the denominator as much as possible and get it into the form of partial fraction decomposition. So let's just uh, factor the denominator, we get x minus 3 times x plus 2 and that's pretty much all we can factor. So now our part, we go to our table and we determine that our partial fraction terms are going to be a divided by x minus 3 plus b divided by x plus 2. Now we want to uh, we want to combine those this right side back so it's 1 a uh, rational number, a rational equation. So what we do is just simply uh, multiply each side by um, by the uh, the the opposites denominator term. So let me write this out and show you how we do that. We want to uh, divide a divided by x minus three by x plus two, x plus two, and b divided by x plus 2. We want to multiply that by x minus 3 divided by x minus 3. So this term, this new term that we're multiplying by is just equal to 1. Um, it does, doesn't do anything to the equation other than um, creating um, the same like uh, denominator function on the bottom. So when we combine it, we'll get something like a x plus 2 divided by, sorry, plus b x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 times x plus 2. So that's all, that's all we have to do to combine the terms back together. Now the next step we need to do is um, we need to set the numerators against each other on each side. So we ha our original function is 3x plus 11 divided by x minus 3x plus 2. So we know these, these terms are good to go and we need to solve by uh, our unknowns by setting the numerators equal to each other. So we got 3x plus 11 is equal to a x plus 2 plus b x minus 3. So let's solve for x. First thing we want to do is since we have two unknowns over here um, and we have x's all over the place, we want to get rid of the one of these one unknowns. So what we need to do is plug in a value of x that will eliminate at least one of the terms uh, while we solve for the other. So We'll just take this first term and uh, look for a way to eliminate it, and that's by plugging in x is equal to minus 2. That will make this first term 0, which will give us then 3 times minus 2 plus 11 is equal to b minus 2 minus 3, which then uh, just solving, we get b is equal to negative 1. Now the next one is we want to eliminate this b term uh, just by plugging in x is equal to 3. Again we get 3 times 3 plus 11 is equal to a times 3 plus 2 and we find that a is equal to 4. So those are our two constants that we need to now plug back into our original, uh, de uh, our original partial fraction decomposition right here. So we uh, let's start a new page here. Actually, I'll just go up here, keep it on the same page so you can reference it. Plugging a in, we got uh, four divided by x minus three plus b divided by x plus 2 and that's this now this uh, this function is equivalent to our original function 
3x plus 11 divided by x minus 3 times x plus 2. And all we need to do now to solve it is to integrate. These are simply integrated. And the answer will end up being 4 natural log of x minus 3 plus, oops, this b is negative 1, plus negative 1 times the natural log of x plus 2 plus a constant. So that is one example of how we would do partial fraction decomposition to determine the integral of a rational expression. So let's look into another example now that we've ran you through the process once. I won't go into as much detail in this example. Uh, just follow along. Um, and uh, you should be able to pick it up with a little bit of practice here. So let's integrate the function x squared plus 4 divided by 3x to the third plus 4x squared minus 4x dx. So we're already going to assume that this can be broken down into partial fractions. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's first uh, Let's uh, factor the denominator as much as we can, and we get uh, x squared plus 4 divided by x times x plus 2 times 3x minus 2. And then our partial fraction terms are now a over x plus b over x plus 2 plus c divided by 3x minus 2. Now in the same uh, way that we did before, we just uh, need to combine this left side or this right side back together. And we do that by making the denominators in each one of these fractions the same. So we're going to multiply uh, a divided by x by x plus 2 times 3x minus 2 divided by x plus 2 times 3x minus 2. And so we'll do that for each term and we'll end up combining to get um, a x plus 2 times 3x minus 2 plus b x 3x minus 2 plus cx x plus 2 divided by x times x plus 2 times 3x minus 2. So once again we need to combine or now that we combined we need to set the numerators against each other so we're taking this value and we're ignoring the denominators because they're equal. Um, so we got x squared plus 4 is equal to a, a x plus 2 times 3x minus 2 plus b x 3x minus 2 plus c x x plus 2. So we just need to uh, determine some terms for x that will eliminate some of these unknown values. So the first one we see that if we plug in x is equal to 0 then the unknown b and c are going to be eliminated. So let's go ahead and plug in x is equal to 0. We get 0 squared plus 4 is equal to a uh, times 2 times minus 2 and we determine that a is equal to negative 1. Now we look at another term we see that uh, if we plug in negative 2 here that uh, a is going to be eliminated if we plug in negative 2 here then the c term is going to be eliminated so let's do negative 2 we got negative 2 squared plus 4 is equal to bx 3x minus 2 and uh, plugging in uh, negative 2 on the right side we got 
3 times negative 2 minus 2, and we find that b is equal to 1 half. And finally, uh, we look at how we can eliminate the b and a and b terms to uh, determine c, and we see that x is equal to 2 thirds. Plugging in 2 thirds here and 2 thirds here will eliminate both a and b. So we got x is equal to 2 thirds. So we got 2 thirds squared plus 4 is equal to c times 2 thirds times 2 thirds plus 2 which is equal to c is going to be equal to 5 halves. So these are our three constants that we now want to take and plug back into our partial fraction decomposition and integrate so we can determine the answer of our original question. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's start a, we'll start a new page here now. So once again we have a is equal to negative 1. We got b is equal to 1 half and we have c is equal to 5 halves. So plugging that back into our original equation, we found that the integral of x squared plus 4 divided by 3x squared plus 4x, or 3x to the third, plus 4x squared minus 4x dx is equal to negative 1 over x, or the integral of negative 1 over x plus 1 half over x plus 2 plus 5 halves over 3x minus 2 dx. And all we need to do is simply integrate each one of those and we find that the answer is negative natural log of x plus 1 half natural log of x plus 2 plus 5 sixth natural log of 3x minus 2. And that is our answer. Through partial fraction decomposition, we determine the integral of a complex rational expression. So that's all I got for you guys today. Quick recap of partial uh, fraction decomposition. I hope that helped you guys out a little bit. If you have any questions, hop on over to engineeringtrainingexam.com and shoot me an email, some feedback, some suggestions or whatnot, and I'll be happy to help you guys out in any way that I'm able. So until next time, we'll be talking soon. Take care. Bye.